Should I try? Yeah. Introducing yourself. Thank you. Do you want to introduce yourself to the tribunal, please? Um, <clears throat> my name is Pavla Holcová. I am from Czech Republic. I started my career as investigative journalist in 2013 when I, I founded Czech Center for Investigative Journalism, now called Investigace.cz. And I am also regional editor for Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. Uh, we focus, I'm a journalist, investigative, and we focus on uncovering corruption and organized crime. Fantastic. And how did you meet, do you mind tell us, how did you mean, uh, meet Jack Kusiak? And what kind of investigation do you undertake together? I met Jan Kuciak uh, some right in 2013 when we worked together on a story uh, that was focusing on uh, working conditions of workers from Slovakia coming to build some bridge in Sweden. Um, I needed someone who would help me with the story to, to discover the working conditions, to talk to the workers and to, to find out what is their salary. And I was introduced to Jan Kuciak. Um, and we've done the story together and I understood that he's very talented, young investigative journalist. He was studying by then. And uh, after this experience, he became my first point of contact whenever I needed anything from Slovakia. And then um, what happened Come a consequence of, of his work and the work? Yeah, of we, we started to work together on, on other stories as well. One of them was Panama Papers. It was a global project that was uncovering how powerful people are stashing their assets in offshore companies, hiding uh, behind offshore companies. And uh, uh, the story was published five years ago. And when we published the story in Czech Republic, because Slovakia was not covered by then, uh, Jano Kuciak, he just picked up the phone and called me if he can come to work on the, on the Slovak stories, Slovak angle. And I said, yes, of course. And he just came, you know, as he was, only with his computer. He didn't have any toothbrush. He didn't have any money. He didn't have any, you know fresh t-shirt or underwear, he just came and we stayed in my living room and we work on stories and we publish stories concerning Slovakia within a week. And that's, that's how we actually became very, very close friends. And how did the government of Slovakia respond to the result of your investigations and the information published? The, the government of Slovakia by then didn't really respond to anything that we uncovered and published. They didn't take any action in freezing those assets or investigating it. Or actually, they were offered to get the copy of the Panama Papers documents from German police and they didn't show any interest in picking it up. In, but just tell us the events that they carried, you know, they, they went to the attack of Jan. Uh, no, this was not, not the event that led to the attack of the journalist. Um, uh, Jan Kuciak, since 2017, he was investigating a very powerful Slovak businessman by then. His name is Marian Kochner. And he was basing his investigations on various documents, on a, on a publicly accessible information. He was putting the pieces together, he was analyzing it, and it made Marian Kochner very angry because he could not actually argue with the facts delivered by the documents. So the stories Jana Kuciak was publishing or exposing were you know, they were, they, they were bulletproof. They, you, you can't really argue with the facts and that made Marian Kochner very, very crazy and upset. And one day he called Jano Kuciak and he threatened him in the phone call that he is going to collect dirt on him and his family and he's going to expose him and his family and their wrongdoings. And then Jano called me and asked me what is he supposed to do with it? And I told him to go and report it to the police. So he went and report this case, this event to the police, but the police didn't take any action. So it just kind of evap evaporated. And then what happened? Tell us. And 
and I believe it was the point when Marian Kochner decided that he is going to hire someone who will assassinate Jano Kuciak. And then, do you, related, do you want to have, you know, do, do you have the time? And I know that they were being very strict with the time, but if you want to relate, you know, how Janet was, was assassinated and how the government responded to, to his death and what happened after. Um, Jano Kuciak, together with his fiance, they were assassinated on 21st of February, 2018. And uh, fortunately, it didn't really leave the, the Slovak society like numb. It uh, sent shockwaves through the society and people decided that they are going to, to protest in the streets. They went to the streets and they demanded justice, they demanded independent investigation, and they demanded the government and the police president to resign. It took another month before the, the government resigned and before the police president resigned, but after the resignation of the police president of then government, uh, the investigation really accelerated because uh, the, the, the new... Uh, investigator was appointed to this fact. It was a young police investigator who didn't have any ties to, to politics. He didn't know how the system worked. So he just had quite a free hands to investigate. And within a couple of months, he detained those who pulled the trigger. And one of those who, who organized pulling of the trigger and organized, co-organized the murder, he expose those people who, actually he mentioned the names of the people who kind of organized the murder, hired those people, and who paid for it. And he was talking about Marian Kochner, the businessman. So it really developed quickly, the investigation. But after the assassination, we didn't really believe that the investigation would be independent. And it really didn't look like there will be any independent investigation. So we as OCCRP, we created kind of emergency team who was sent to Slovakia. Uh, it was team of five people. They were sent to Slovakia to collect as much of the evidence as possible. And they collected CCTV footage. They made hours and hours of interviews and they, um, you know, they, they talk to the families, and because the families of Jano and Martina, they knew me, they shared some of the information about, the, you know, how the investigation was proceeding, and some details they, they knew about the murder. So we put the pieces together, and by 2019, we published the story how the murder happened. And it created a new public pressure on on the political system and on the investigation. So it also helped to proceed with the investigation. But it also meant that the threats to our as a journalists and to us as a team of journalists who were exposing those stories, they somehow got more intense. Anyway, in 2000, by the end of 2019, we got a data set of 70 terabytes of data. Um, and we managed to process the data and create a team of uh, Slovak journalists and us from Czech Republic who were able to work on those 70 terabytes of data who were actually a copy of the police file, including all the annexes. And one of the annexes was the cell phone of Marian Kochner, the businessman. And we exposed the stories, how actually not only the murder happened, but also how the system, the corrupt system of Slovakia worked. And we found messages of Marian Kochner sending messages to the judges or to the prosecutors, telling them how to rule in his cases. And we exposed those stories and the government, the, the, there were elections and the old government lost elections. And... Uh, Recently, the impact not only of those stories, but also of the police investigation, 
that collect such evidence about the corrupt system. It made a huge changes in Slovakia recently. About 20 of the judges were indicted for corruption. Uh, also, prosecutors were indicted for corruption, and those were not some kind of a low-level judges. Those were judges, including those from Supreme Court of Slovakia. So, yes, we somehow, this is kind of the change that actually the, the cooperation of the journalists of a team of a 15 journalists who were sharing their findings, who were sharing the data, um, that, that happened. Anyway, um, Marian Kochner was sentenced to 19 years in prison, but not for the murder case, but for his financial fraud. For the murder case, him, together with the organizer of the murder, Alena Zhuzhová, they were absolved for lack of evidence, so they, uh, they kind of, the judges were not able to see that there is enough, enough of the evidence to, to sentence them. Uh, but the prosecutors appealed and the Supreme Court decided ordered retrial of the case, but we are still waiting what will be the outcome of the retrial. What is the situation, uh, Ms. Pavla, today for journalists in the Czech Republic and in Slovakia as a consequence of your efforts in this? Yeah, we, we are under permanent pressure from politicians because we, the, the politicians, they don't take journalists as a part of a democratic process. They take them as enemies. We have a president who had a press conference where he was posing with a gun, with inscription to the journalists. And um, only a couple of weeks ago, we published a story in the project Pandora Papers. We exposed the Czech prime minister having had bought luxury real estate in France through offshore companies. Um, and since then, the discreditation and smear campaign started. He owns a media. These media are totally focused, running campaign again against us. We have a lot of threats being received by a mail uh, to my office, to, to on a social network such as Facebook or Twitter. Um, and it multiplied a lot in last weeks. Thank you very much.